Jedi Master Mace Windu was perhaps one of the most capable Jedi in the entire Order, and came the closest to killing Sidious before being cut down by Anakin Skywalker. But what if Windu survived this savage attack? Please don't! I need him! Please don't! Don't! <laughs> Now, for this theory, we're going to say everything still happens as it does in our timeline. Windu loses his hand and is launched out the window of Sidious' office, but somehow survives and is rendered unconscious. By the time he wakes, the Jedi Temple has been sacked and Order 66 is happening. So, what happens from here? Well, Windu is not that much use at this point. He has no hand, so I'm going to say he gets off-world and gets medical attention. So, realistically, Windu would make contact with the remaining Jedi, and I'm going to say that he meets them on Polis Massa, where Padme dies giving birth to Luke and Leia. Vader still gets burnt and is put in the suit, and Sidious still takes power. So, the timeline is basically identical, but Windu's alive, and although that may seem very minor, it actually could make a considerable difference. Windu is, for all intents and purposes, a warrior, and he has a lot of experience. He was on the council when Obi-Wan was still an apprentice, and was possibly one of the finest swordsmen in the entire Jedi Order. And he was known to be incredibly strict in maintaining and following the Jedi Code and fulfilling the tasks of the Jedi. For this reason, I believe Windu would not maybe be quite as complacent as Yoda and Obi-Wan, who were waiting for the children to grow up to then take over the Empire. Windu would want to stop the Sith as soon as possible, as they represented everything that he had vowed as a Jedi to destroy, and I really don't think he would see going into hiding for 20 odd years as an option. For this reason, I believe Windu would attempt to form a militia, gathering Jedi who would survive the massacre at the temple and around the galaxy at the hands of clones and Vader. Now, we know there was a few important Jedi who have survived the initial purge, many of whom will be hunted down in the following years, particularly Jukasta Nu, the Keeper of the Jedi Library, who had survived the purge and was attempting to preserve the ancient Jedi knowledge and archives. I believe Windu would track these Jedi down and have them join him, likely fleeing to the unknown regions to gather their strength and have any Padawans they had saved, such as Kane and Jarrus, who was Windu's apprentice's apprentice, complete their training, making all the remaining Jedi combat ready. Now, of course, it would take time to ensure that the remaining Jedi were fully trained, and it's almost guaranteed that Sidious will be aware of Windu's survival and would dispatch Inquisitors to deal with him. However, I highly doubt that they would stand too strongly against the Jedi Master, even with the loss of his arm. Him, backed by a dozen or so capable Jedi Knights, would make short work of any Inquisitors. As well as this, I believe that the Hermit lifestyle that the Jedi will be forced to adopt to avoid the attention of the Empire may actually be good for them. The Jedi's minds have become clouded during the Clone Wars. They allowed the Dark Side to take advantage of them, making them weaker. But without this, it's likely that the Jedi would become more like the peace-seeking monks that they were a millennia ago, in balance with the Force, if you will. So, let's say it's been 10 to 15 years after Sidious' initial rise to power. In this time, the Jedi have trained all survivors, and they now have about 30 Jedi, all of Night Class and above. I know these numbers are a bit off, but for the fun of speculation, we'll go with them. As well as this, at this time, Rebel Cells are starting to become more and more common, as the galaxy begins to realise Sidious serves himself chiefly, and his promise to bring prosperity to the galaxy was pretty much a lie. I believe Windu would make contact with his old allies from the Clone Wars, such as Senator Bail Organa and Charm Syndulla, the head of the Free Ryloth movement, and begin to organise the construction of his own rebel alliance. The Jedi were still respected by some, and the fact that Windu had bested Sidious in single combat before would be a strong incentive to join his campaign. So I'm going to say Windu manages to gather a few thousand people to back his cause, as well as some capital ships and fighters, possibly even allying themselves with ex-Separatist worlds who had felt the full trauma of Sidious's new order. So atop of his 30 Jedi, he now has a small army and fleet, so what's he going to do with it? Well, 
Windu as a Jedi has vowed to destroy the dark side, bringing balance to the Force, and that's what he's going to do. Now, he would not attack Coruscant directly. It was far too well protected, so how does he get to Sidious? Well, one of Sidious's weakest points in his rule was when he visited Ryloth due to civil unrest as a publicity stunt. Here, the Ryloth rebels destroyed Sidious's Star Destroyer and left him stranded, where he was forced to fight the rebels himself. Now, in this instance, he did prevail. So, Windu's going to want to lure Sidious away from Coruscant to attack him. He'd likely have a high-ranking rebel senator, such as Bail Organa or the current Queen of Naboo, urge Sidious to visit Alderaan or Naboo, both of which have significance to the Empire, so he'd likely do it. Here, the rebels would launch their assault. Windy's entire army would likely be able to take down the Emperor's standard protection and escort, which would probably be a legion of stormtroopers as well as star destroyers and fighters, etc. But then, it would be up to Windu and his 30 or so Jedi Knights to deal with the Sith. Realistically, this theory can go one of two ways. Either Windu and the Jedi manage to kill Vader and then end Sidious as well. Now, they're still far from out of the woods. The Imperials are incredibly strong, and as long as the likes of Tarkin and other Imperial Moths live, the Imperial regime would also survive. However, after the defeat of Sidious, the Rebellion would see a huge boost in momentum, and this combined with the Jedi's backing, it's likely that they could stand a good chance against the Imperials. Or two, Sidious learns of the trap and with Vader they manage to defeat Windu as well as the other Jedi. The remaining rebels will be slaughtered by Imperial reinforcements, the world which had hosted the trap will be ravaged and made an example of, and Sidious would go on ruling the galaxy, using the attempt on his life to further excuse his totalitarian regime and colossal military. Ultimately, Windu could have been a major piece in Sidious's downfall. He was a strong warrior and a competent commander. But what do you think would happen? Could Windu be the one to bring the Empire to its knees, or would he fall as he did before in Palpatine's office? Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed. If so, please leave a like and sub as it's always appreciated and really does help the channel grow. Also, don't forget to follow me on Twitter at the Law Guy for regular updates. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.